And the next topic, why don't I get a Charles Schwab checking account? People have been recommending this for years since I'm always mentioning the uh, ATM fees. Now, one of the reasons that I regularly mention the ATM fees and also the currency conversion scam. Okay, I wonder if this could possibly be... Ooh, it might be. Let's get down there. The currency conversion scam, which I call a straight-up scam, in which the machine, the company owning the ATM, is offering to convert your money for you if you're withdrawing say Turkish Lira or Euros and you have a bank account in the US. The uh, ATM will offer to do the conversion for you. It is always a scam. They are going to give you a worse rate than your bank will give you. This shouldn't even be illegal. It's just, you know, totally theft. And so I mention it regularly just to inform my viewers about this uh, scam to watch out for. As far as the prices, then it's just a matter of, uh, again, informing you, just to think about, you know, you can oftentimes find an ATM with a lower fee by trying multiple ATMs because they don't all have the same fee. But uh, it is an absolutely valid suggestion to get the Charles Schwab checking account because apparently they don't charge you an ATM fee at their end because my bank charges me five dollars so regardless of whatever the uh, ATM I'm using charges which they often will even if you deny the uh, currency conversion then additionally I get charged five bucks per withdrawal by my bank okay this is a uh, sketchy one here. Gonna put the camera away. And so the uh, Charles Schwab bank account does sound like the way to go for travelers, especially long-term travelers. So the only reason that I haven't gotten around to getting it is because of the, you know, just procedure. Boom. This is it. I already have two checking accounts, one American, one Canadian, and then I have PayPal, and then I have a Capital One credit card. And so, it's just kind of reluctance to open up another account, even though it makes sense. But also, partly it's because the amount that I spend each month on ATM fees just isn't all that much. Maybe it comes down to, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 bucks a month. Let's say you're withdrawing once a week. That's four times the $5 that my bank charges me. And then some of those withdrawals won't have an ATM fee because I regularly find ATMs that don't charge you a fee. And then when there is a fee, then it is anywhere from, for example, I found an ATM here in uh, Gurme, the town here in Cappadocia where I'm staying, that was, I think, 150 or maybe 130, somewhere around 120 to 150 Turkish lira. And so that's like four or five dollars. So that's reasonable. I talked about previously the uh, ATMs here in Turkey are really expensive. They can be more than 10 bucks for a withdrawal fee. All right, so uh, a pretty remarkable cave church, I would assume, but it doesn't have the frescoes and also not seeing like any crosses or anything clearly indicating that it is a church. I wonder if it could possibly be something else, perhaps pre-Christian, maybe a temple, kind of like the uh, goddess temple that I showed 
at the end of my last video that was over there near Garame, much smaller, but uh, a little bit similar as far as the vaulted roofs and uh, the general design. But there isn't an altar here like that other place. So, I have no idea. Best guess would be a church. And so if, you know, say, half of those ATM withdrawals, I get charged a fee and half I don't, and I withdraw once a week, then it's $30 a month. And that's just, you know, a drop in the bucket of my monthly expenses, so it's really just not that big of a deal. It is certainly something that I will consider doing at some point in the future, but, uh, you know, there just isn't, like, the huge incentive to, to make that happen. So here you have some uh, local people using uh, the old caves for a horse stable. Hello. Hi there. Pretty horse. Hello. So I'll mention here something I was going to mention at the beginning, which is feel free to put in the comments your best travel tips. Any, you know, travel tips that might not be so obvious for whatever. How to find cheaper hotel rooms, how to find cheaper flights, how to, uh, you know, navigate better. I know some people use like Maps.me. I don't use that because you have to download it for each region and I just don't need it. Google Maps works great. But uh, any like insider tips? So I'll mention uh, about uh, points. I said that I have a Capital One credit card and yes, I rack up points with that and it is fairly significant to the point that I managed to pay for some of my flights I mean, I paid for like a $700 flight to Saudi Arabia once with points just because I'd let them, you know, rack up a bunch. But uh, Capital One, Visa card, I can recommend. Certainly not sponsored or anything, but uh, if people have other suggestions, that's something that I've never really gotten fully savvy about is various ways to rack up points. I really don't do like uh, flight, you know, rewards points because I'm just booking the cheapest flight that I can find with whatever airline. I'm not going to be committed to one particular airline and racking up points with them. I guess maybe some airlines pull together and you can rack up points with uh, multiple airlines that will all pool in one place or something like that, I don't really know. So that's one of those things that I've just never really gotten that into. But uh, if people have ideas for how to save those precious dollars and anything else, then feel free to uh, write them down below. And also, if you have any like questions for me as far as like, well, why do you do things this way, most of the times when people write these, you know, comments, why did you do that, criticizing whatever I did, however I did something, then there's a reason and a good one, and sometimes I will respond and uh, explain, but if you knew the context, then it would likely make sense why I did it the way that I did it. But, uh, of course, not always, you know. I make mistakes, I don't know everything. And, uh, totally open to ideas. So, the next uh, topic is, why don't I do more research? So this is kind of a common one. Someone will see me trying to figure out, you know, 
where the bus station is, what the bus schedule is. So a specific example from a recent uh, comment under my video arriving in Baku, Azerbaijan. So I fly into the uh, airport there and then walk up to the information counter. Look at this cross. So we have clear evidence of Christianity. Yeah, so this one much more clearly looks like a very little you know, chapel altar. We got the uh, frescoes or just one fresco, I guess, and then some simple designs. And then, so what is that? Toilet or... for water storage. So, I uh, arrive in Baku. I go to the information desk, so Information desks at airports around the world tend to be manned or womaned by people who speak English. It's pretty much universal. And so I'll just count on that as far as getting into the city. Go to the information desk and ask where's the bus or the train or what are my options for getting into Baku. And so she says bus is just outside. So I exit the airport and sure enough, bus waiting there. I think the uh, bus driver was maybe like talking with somebody or something. And so I go uh, get on the bus and I'm sitting there. Actually, no, it was a bit of a wait, waiting for the bus driver to tell us we could get on the bus. That's right. And so put my luggage underneath, get on the bus, sitting there. And then somehow or another, probably the bus driver said something, I realized I needed to get the ticket beforehand. You couldn't just pay the bus driver. So he points at this machine that's nearby. And so I walk over to this machine and I think it did have English as an option, but it's still kind of confusing. And I know how much the price of the bus ticket is, it's really, really cheap. They use the manat in Azerbaijan, and so it was just a few manats, which was like less than two dollars, I think. And so I'm trying to figure out this machine, but uh, it's not clear if it's going to give me change, and I only have like a hundred manat bill, which is around sixty dollars US, the problem is that the bus is about to leave any minute. And so I don't have time to like go back into the airport and try to break this bill. And so a wing and a prayer, I just put the 100 minot in there, hoping that it's going to give me change. But it does not. It gives me like a ticket with the 100 minot on this ticket. And a 100 minot is not going to end up being spent by me in the course of my week in Baku. That would last like months probably. And so it is what it is. I get on the bus and I use the, uh, the pass a couple of times, but it's nowhere near spent down by the time that uh, I head back to the airport to catch my next flight. Now, as it turned out, I somehow managed to find somebody. I was like walking to the airport and pass somebody and ask them, like they were leaving the airport and so it seemed clear that they were going uh, into Azerbaijan, you know, having just arrived into Baku. And so I guess I thought, well, this person might need a bus pass. And so sure enough, they bought it off me for like way less than what was on there, maybe only $15 or something. But point being, somebody commented saying, why didn't you do any research so that you were more prepared for this bus situation? 
no, I disagree on this one. So, for one thing, how would you know about this machine situation ahead of time? Like, I wouldn't even think to research that, even if I was going to look online for how do I get from the Baku airport into the city. I would look at, you know, type in to Google transportation Baku airport into Baku city center, something like that. And then you'll come up with like probably Rome to Rio dot com would come up and various other um, options, information explaining. But it's kind of unlikely unless you find some website that's like very explicitly going through the whole process, you know, that mentions you need this card that you buy at this machine and you should get some small bills or whatever. And so that was, you know, kind of a obscure situation that you really couldn't predict. But even when it comes to just catching the bus into the city, no, I'm not going to spend my time researching stuff like that when you can just go up to the information counter and ask them. It's a really basic, straightforward thing to get from an airport into the middle of the city. So you're going to spend time on it if you're going to do research. And the way it goes with uh, online research, especially when it comes to dealing with bus schedules in foreign countries that might only be in foreign languages and very often they're outdated, they're only applicable to a certain part of the season and not when you're there or whatever. It's just a whole, you know, wild goose chase oftentimes trying to get specific information for this kind of stuff. Now when it comes to like more long distance buses I need to get from Munich to Paris. And yeah, I'm going to look online and research that or go to the bus station and ask them. That's an even better way. And then you know for sure you're getting yeah, straight information. Just go there, bus station, train station, ask them what are the options, you know, and uh, they're going to know. And then you buy your ticket. So that's more often how I will do it. But sometimes then uh, I'll look online and maybe book online. As I said, RomeToRio.com is a great website for uh, general transportation. But when it comes to so many of the situations that you're going to encounter in the course of your travels, for one thing, a lot of it you just can't predict. You don't know what uh, situations are going to come up. You're in an unfamiliar country, it's all new to you, and you don't know what's going to be a problem and what's going to be simple to figure out. And so you're going to spend time doing online research, and that can be a lot of time. You can spend hours jumping around websites trying to figure stuff out, or you can just go for it and figure it out along the way. And you may find that you end up spending some extra time not knowing and having to ask around or whatever. But there's a pretty good chance you're going to spend less time in the moment on the ground dealing with the situation than you would have spent doing online research. And also, you're then not going to waste your time researching potential problems that end up never coming up. So for the critical stuff, yes, I mean, I'm always doing some research before I go to a country, especially a new one. Do you need a visa? Do you need an onward flight? What is the language there? What is the weather? I've canceled plans because check the weather and wasn't what I wanted to experience. For example, Egypt, I was seriously considering going to Egypt instead of Turkey right now, but I checked the weather and it was super hot. 104 Fahrenheit, 40 degrees Celsius. So uh, no point in going there to be roasting away. And so 
there are certain things you definitely want to do your research in order to avoid big problems, disaster. You get to the airport, you can't board the flight because you don't have the visa or you don't have, you know, a yellow fever vaccination to go to Bolivia. You have to have this vaccination. You show up at the uh, airport for your flight, don't have that. If you're flying from, you know, New York City to Bolivia, that's an expensive flight that uh, you are going to not be able to get on and possibly lose a lot of money. And so, yes, you want to research certain things. And I have a pretty good handle at this point on what you should research in advance and what you can leave for later. Figure out when you get there, even if I might look a little bumbling and like I don't know what's going on because quite possible that I don't know what's going on and I'm trying to figure it out, but that's the traveling experience. I have no expectation of arriving in a country and just boom, 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 you know everything and you figure it all out and you don't have to ask anybody any questions. I am very accustomed to uh, asking locals questions, directions, how do I do this or that, how do I pay for the tram, yada, yada. And so far so good, I have always managed to figure things out and really, ultimately, my traveling experiences over the past 34 years have been pretty smooth. Definitely some pretty serious situations, some of which I could have avoided, whether it was a matter of knowing something or just more likely having made a better choice about whatever, you know. I slept out on the streets of Paris and lo and behold woke up in the morning and my backpack was stolen. That was a rough one. Fortunately, that was at the very end of my trip. Would have like ruined my trip if it had been at the beginning, but I was flat out of money. I had like $50 left, I think, in Paris. I had a flight out of London like three days later and uh, I couldn't afford to stay anywhere. So I uh, slept out, unfortunately lost a backpack along with a lot of stuff that I wish that I still had, some film. That's really the only thing that mattered now, but at the time I lost, you know, my tent and some clothes that I liked and fortunately my uh, day pack I had been using as a pillow sleeping on the Pont Neuf bridge over the River Seine there in Paris and the day pack had my little bit of cash that I had left my passport my flight ticket back in the old days when you needed to have a paper ticket all the most essentials and so I just carried on and got my flight and so most travelers have experienced some sort of uh, traumatic event, theft, etc, etc. You can't avoid them all, but you can do your best to avoid at least some of them by making good choices and being prepared for certain things. So uh, there you go. That is a good time to uh, wrap up the video. It is hot. It is time to uh, get out of the sun. I'm getting hungry, so uh, going to maybe just a walk into Garame and uh, go find a mid-afternoon lunch slash dinner. <laughs>